Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar, Tech Tuesday's webinar on what's new in Informatica 10.4 release. Today's presenter is Lakshmi Narasimhan Veeradakavan. He has over 16 years of expertise in handling power center and data quality products. Before we get started, we would like to suggest some housekeeping tips. The session is going to be just one hour, including the Q&A session. All dial-in participants will be muted to enable the speaker to present without interruption. Questions can be submitted to all panelists via the Q&A option, and we will respond at the end of the presentation. The webinar will be recorded and will be available to view on our Informatica support YouTube channel and success portal. The link will be emailed as well. Please set aside some time to complete the feedback, uh, post the post webinar survey, and uh, um, uh, please suggest uh, where we can improve on the topics that is coming up for the uh, next webinars. The Tech Tuesday webinars series is introduced uh, within the success portal that has come up newly in Informatica. It is a micro learning platform that offer free and unlimited learning to all registered users. Success portal lists uh, your success offerings, your CSMs info, ask an expert booking sessions um, and customized recommendation uh, or content. Uh, we are releasing a new chatbot, Diana, uh, in, uh, that is coming out shortly for our cl cloud customers. Now I would hand it over to Lex Lakshmi, Lex uh, Lakshmi Narasimhan for uh, the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Vrinda, and uh, morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and this lecture one, you can call me Lax. Uh, thank you, Vrinda, for the intro, and we do, I do thank the panelists who will be joining me uh, from our support itself. It will be Srinivas Sampath, uh, Vidya Sridhar, and uh, Vipin Vijay, thank you for them, for their expertise, right? So let's go ahead and start this uh, session. Uh, before we start, it's just the safe harbor here, okay? Now, uh, so what are we presenting as a Tech Tuesday uh, this on 4th February is a very high level update on what Informatica has released as 10.4. What are the themes for each of the particular areas, whether it's a data catalog or power center, some on certification. So it's a very, very high level uh, broad just to know what is being released, number one. Number two, if you want a deep dive to understand on a particular area, we will have a deep dive sessions on each of this uh, product area and Tech Tuesdays, which will follow up. So you can uh, take a deep dive on that one, or you can open a technical case for us so we can answer what is needed for. Uh, so going in, right? So what is Informatica 10.4? Uh, it was released in December 2019. Uh, the operating system were Linux, AX, and Windows at a high level. And uh, you can look at the PAM. Uh, I have provided the URL for the PAM, and you, we will go over if it's needed at the end of the session as part of Q&A. And we do have changes in products, right? So product name, we don't uh, call anymore a big data, which has been changed to a data engineering product, right? So no more there will be a big data, which was there. Now hereafter, it will be called as data engineering, uh, depending upon the area, whether it's integration, quality, or streaming, or masking. So we have changed the data engineering uh, from uh, big data. And same thing with the enterprise data catalog and enterprise data preparation. We have aligned this as a data uh, catalog product family. Uh, the second thing uh, going forward, uh, Informatica will not have anything called a hotfix or service packs. Uh, we are changing the naming convention going forward, starting from 10.4. Uh, it will be all numeric, uh, 
so for example let's say uh, the uh, next upcoming release is 10.4.0.1 release and uh, what exactly it means is the main release line will be 10 10 series and the there is a major version which is dot four right dot four meaning it will have a repository upgrade and other things are major features so uh, 10.4 uh, previously we used to have something called 10.4 hotfix one right so going forward it will be 10.4.0 or 10.4.1 which will dictate the hot fixes and the fourth digit will be service pack i'm sure its majority of them are for uh, data engineering and data catalog where you get a service pack so here after service packs will be the fourth digit so that we don't have confusion uh, so this is the change uh, we are putting in forward so here after any hot fix or uh, service packs will be numbers it will not be uh, uh, alpha numeric uh, release right so uh, now coming to the high level where uh, when i say platform this impacts all the uh, products in this one so that's why i have named it as a platform so it's not a product by itself so i'm just saying at the high level underlying informatica 10.4 these changes impact everyone right so um, at a high level uh, if you look what are the new certifications we have done as sql server to uh, windows server 2019 and linux we have three different flavors we have added amazon linux ubuntu and z linux and we are dropping the support for Solaris completely starting 10.4 uh, the reason being we don't have Oracle is not doing much of the development, but if you have any further queries regarding this or have a roadblock, please open a technical uh, case and we will work with you to see what can be done. Right? Uh, uh, from the database, particularly uh, for the domain purpose, we do have Oracle 19C SQL Server. And a big new one which we are introducing as part of 10.4 is PostgreSQL, which will be a domain as well as a repository. You should be able to take advantage of that. And it's been a long ask from a lot of customers. So we are introducing. Uh, coming to LDAP authentication, we do have cross realm Kerberos authentication. We introduced this as part of 10 to HF2, but now we have a full level certification and support on that one. Again, uh, the new thing for LDAP is we do support multiple LDAP servers and we do have new capabilities of doing a custom LDAP and on authentication side we have introduced saml and oracle unified directory and as well as azure <coughs> excuse me um, on others where we call us utilities we have um, certified dockers so the new dockers can uh, dockers can be used as part of 10.4 product um, and kubernetes so these are the new uh, image or the cloud offering we are able to provide as part of the platform. Uh, coming to the uh, data catalog, which is enterprise data catalog as most of them call. And we are, as I said, we are grouping it under a data catalog uh, family so if you look at it uh, what do we have as a theme right i'm not going to dive deep as i said we will have following sessions for just enterprise data clock or it might happen so uh, wherein they will be able to uh, dive deep into these areas but at the high level uh, these are the themes which was part of the data catalog product family so it was data map for enterprise right catalog all enterprise data and its complex relationship uh, to intelligent curation and collaboration this is based on our clar a based solution which we are able to offer then unmatched user experience there have been a lot of enhancements on this one so you can take a look at it then deployment at enterprise scale so vast number of system on-prem or cloud can be uh, <coughs> enterprise level understanding of the data you can deploy right uh, data provisioning 
simple data provisioning experience to discover. Right? And uh, we have a full range of APIs where you should be able to take advantage and use it. Um, PAM changes very specific to the data catalog area. You would know what are the existing ones. So the new ones which we have introduced as part of uh, 10.4 will be data quality 10 to HF2, 10.4, uh, SAP, Azure, Power BI, Google Cloud Storage, AWS, Google, uh, Snowflake, and Cassandra. Again, uh, for uh, scanners, we do have a host of a lot of new functionalities and features we have brought as a, a PAM support, right? I would just uh, hold the screen for a few seconds so you can just go over uh, whichever area you're looking for. And if it is very specific where you say, will this version be supported or what version that will be a PAM question, or again, you can open a technical case. Just to call out like Google BigQuery has been introduced as part of this, or Azure Blob Storage, which are the big ones uh, and popular ones. So I'm just holding it for five seconds. You can take a look. Okay, uh, going forward. So the next would be data engineering integration. As I said, no more big data. So it has been uh, renamed as data engineering. Uh, again, uh, the theme wise on data engineering is enterprise class, where it's a cloud, uh, continuous integration and deployment REST initiative docker uh, debugging innovation that was on the enterprise class on spark we do have a lot of enhancement right so support for uh, new versions functionality profiling and b2b hierarchical data processing additional connectors spark jdbc uh, when it comes to the cloud we have azure aws gcp uh, data bricks we have added more supports for data bricks and enhanced it so azure adls gen 2 uh the same thing uh the breakdown uh, are more detail on whatever i explained on the previous screen right so you should be able to see and right? we do have rest api support for uh, deploy update and query objects uh, for your cd and uh, ca pipelines again clar uh, informatica based uh, aa solution so it gives you best practice recommendation on mapping design and changes debugger enhancement uh, we will be able to aggregate the logs uh, better so using the infra command or the tools for in the spark i said uh, we are giving you structured and semi-structured or unstructured uh, file formatting for data process uh, transmission through spark uh, profiling on spark and again, hierarchical data processing, just like from the B2B midstream and all these supports have been added, right? It includes data preview, intelligence structure, discovery and improvement. Um, so if you look at the uh, product uh, roadmap, right? So very specifically uh, PAM, uh, CDH, HDP, and uh, MAPR, HDI, EMR, and Databricks 5.0. So all these new versions have been involved. And if you look at it, right, the previously we used to call Hotfix one or Service Pack one. So going forward, you would see uh, versioning change. So I think the next one would be 10.4.0.1. Uh, coming to installers, what are the changes we have done as part of the 10.4 installer? So uh, again, in 10.4, uh, we did change the whole installation. Instead of uh, 
doing piece by piece or product by product, right? If you look at our 10.2, we did have different installers for each of the products. If you said you are using only power center and data quality, then you had a different installer. Then if you come back and say, I want to use data engineering or big data, then we had a different installer. Or if it is very specific to enterprise data catalog or catalog, then we used to give three different installers. So uh, we have all unified all these installers into a single one rather than having different, different installers and multiple steps to get through. Uh, 10.4, we do have a unified installer, right? So if you see See, it's a single unified installer both for power center or platform or data engineering or even for uh, the data catalog so it's going to be same right so we did enhance this one to make it easier when you are doing the installation so we do have power profile warehouse or CMS configuration as part added as part of the installer itself so all these enhancements have been done very specific to additionally for uh, big data and data engineering. Then we do have a new encryption utility where the uh, password can be encrypted and put it as part of the silent installer. Uh, this was asked, so we did uh, fill. Again, uh, we have added uh, creation of repository service or integration service from the installer wizard and it's able based on the i9 pi we will be able to load all the information for you the installer itself rather than you retyping it uh, these are very specific where uh, for containers where we, I was discussing about or uh, specifying about the docker. So we have incorporated all this UI feedback and everything for the docker. Uh, again, this is at a high level PAM support. It's same as the platform where we have added this one. So again, a PAM is going to be the same is as good as the uh, platform itself so um, there is no change on the PAM or whatever I put them. Now uh, coming to the uh, container itself right so the dockers itself if you see we are able to give you standard images for power center and data engineering products you can create the docker or kubernetes and it will be a one click option you should be able to pre build this one and deploy it wherever you want so you can take advantage of docker and kubernetes. Okay. Uh, coming to uh, power center so power center if you see uh, again uh, OS is a repeat where it's a C Windows Server 2019 and Amazon Linux again for the repository we were able to add 18 and 19 C 18 then SQL Server 2019 and Postgres uh, SQL 10 dot 6 Uh, new connectivity certification very specific to on-prem uh, power center power exchange for JD Edwards power exchange for SBase uh, relational character again it's going to be the same one additional is MQ 9.1 and JMS 2.0 We do have additional enhancement as part of the connectors. If you look at it for uh, DB2, we support on cloud, which is the IACS, which has I, IBM has come up and dash DB. Uh, Postgres SQL, we support both on native connector as well as ODBC. Uh, we have added dynamic uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 for sales, that's the API based one. And we have added support for Oracle Instant Client, Oracle 19C rack, and impersonation on Oracle connection. Uh, 
and coming to the domain or domain level security as i specified you will be able to use saml to identify different application whether it's admin console or analyst tool you should be able to take advantage of saml and it is based on 2.0 specification right? and we do have added a support for multiple ldap service directory previously we used to have only one now we can support multiple and some enhancement on the command line itself uh, the uh, operation insight uh, most of them you'll be using so uh, this is the enhancement as part of 10.4 we are releasing right so if you see to know what exactly is running on your system and everything to take advantage of that uh, the new pricing for on-prem products is right so basically it will be a free annual subscription and retention will be 30 day ruling the number of power center or this uh, domains will be 10 in advanced edition uh, retention can be up to 12, 12 months auto scaling increase the number of domain and uh, clear uh, alerts will be there on, on me uh, basically we are on the roadmap to add the custom job alert and connection articles excuse me on the roadmap Again, uh, this is basically how do you sign up for on-prem or IACS, how do you reach out, right? So on-prem, you should be able to click and join, but if you are an IACS customer, so you might need to, with on-prem products, then you have to reach to support, but if you are the IACS customer alone, you'll automatically get this one. Uh, the other uh, products where we have enhances like B2B, so intelligent structure uh, discovery, which we I said as part of data engineering and streaming, we are able to add ORC, Avro, Parquet, and model base. These are the small enhancement as part of B2B product we are using. Uh, coming to uh, power exchange, which is the power exchange mainframe or uh, CDC connector, uh, they do have a lot of enhancements as part of new IBM, iOS, and ZOS. We are able to enhance the product to support all this one. Again, some performance improvement on the utility for large data maps. General enhancement PostgreSQL is supported as, as CDC source. You'll be able to read from IBM IMS catalog, right? 18C certification for power exchange. Uh, these are uh, the all the PAM changes very specific to power exchange and CDC. Uh, coming to cloud ecosystem and connectivity, I know it's lo uh, a, lo a lot of information. I'm just going to hold it for five, five seconds because I do have three slides on this one and you can grasp what is needed for you, right? Starting from Amazon, Microsoft Azure, uh, Snowflakes, and Google BigQuery. Uh, continuing, so Databricks, SFDC, uh, the latest API, uh, SAP, and Oracle. Uh, then Enterprise Data Warehouse, 
uh, uh, on the category we have green plum and db2 uh, teradata changes a little bit and uh, technology we have the kafka connector for power center and power center real time okay uh, so uh, I will just uh, switch over to a small uh, demo. Uh, it won't be a full-fledged demo. Basic, basically, I'm just showing how the installer has changed. So that one second. Yep. Are you able to see my? Linux window, hopefully. Okay. So if you look at it here, I have downloaded the Linux. So if I start install.sh, and if you see previously, we used to have different installer. Now we have a pure unified installer. And if you see here, where we have specified three different ways of installing the same product, where exactly you are right. So the core will be Informatica domain service, which will include power center and data quality. So some part of data engineering products will be here, not all. The second part would be your uh, data catalog where you are going to use it for enterprise data catalog. The third one would be enterprise data preparation. So I'll go ahead and select one. I'm skipping everything. So I'm just going to do run installer. Yes. Okay, so this is what I just want to show, right? So if you look at it, when you select one, you are going to get the traditional power center and informatic data quality and data engineering products for integration, quality and streaming, not everything. So when you do select, it's going to be completely for your data catalog. Now, when you select, two it means the one is included it's going to install one and two same thing with three it's going to include one and two so it's going to be a roll up rather than an individual so you need not worry about different products which we have got so you should be able to go ahead and directly use this installer that's why we call this as a unified installer but as a rule uh, in the previous version where you had a split domain that continues to be the norm uh, whereas against the uh, standard and the split domain you need to continue to do that one the only thing where we have come back and said instead of having multiple installer and confusing it's going to be a unified installer okay so let me quit here and uh, let me share my other window where i'll just go over the uh, uh, just the uh, ldap uh, to show what exactly it is So we do have a LDAP configuration instead of whenever you used to add, you are going to get. Now here, the difference where we said LDAP. So you can go ahead and have a different LDAP services as a part of this one or multiple servers, right? Previously, we used to su support only one LDAP server. Now going forward, you should be able to take advantage of uh, multiple servers.
and uh, that's about it on the uh, demo side i know it's, we are ahead of time but i'm just opening up for uh, questions hi lex uh, there is yeah. one question from aditya chilukuri uh, datacom uh, will be supported datacom and uh, let me go check right so this is uh, which product area if we can someone tell it will be helpful because that is not specified in the question lux okay okay uh, okay we'll get back to that question later yeah. mm. There is another question from Raja Vidhun. Can you change your BES uh, GET query call to post sending P11 in GET is not a good idea? Again, I, I would defer this one, right? So uh, I would uh, request the uh, uh, questioner to put which product you are looking right? if okay. it's going to be a data catalog or uh, data engineering those uh, panelists will be able to answer okay. so that will be helpful thank you yeah Raja please uh, um, please specify the product yeah. you are mentioning yeah next thank question you. next question would be uh, from Sunil Poti ready. Uh, the question goes like this Informatica Power Exchange CDC 10.4 supports Oracle 19C. Mm -hmm. Slide says so, only 18C. Please continue. Yeah, so 19C is coming as part of uh, the Q1 uh, release for Power Exchange. Uh, they will be supporting in that one. Okay. Uh, next question is from Aaron Faber. The question goes like this. You said it can handle multiple servers. Can it actually handle two of the same servers or is it just different server types? It can handle two different server types. Okay. So previously, if you look at LDAP, we used to have uh, in the LDAP configuration, you can specify only one server. Now you will be able to take advantage and do multiple servers. Okay. The next question uh, from Shanmuga Murugan uh, is Oracle EHCC supported on PWX 10.4? Uh, hey Shanmugam, I don't know what EHCC stands for. I would request you to just open a technical case for that one. That will be helpful. Okay. Uh, next question is from Benjamin Arokisami. Uh, can the profile warehouse PWH be hosted hosted on Postgres? Uh, as of now, no. Uh, the uh, re reason being uh, Postgres does not support null data in their system. So I, I think in future we will figure out how to go about it. It cannot store null. Uh, so that's why it is not there as of now. Okay, Aaron uh, had asked yeah, one question yeah. before and the product he meant was LDAP servers. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, Aaron, it's multiple servers, right? You should be able to take uh, or anyone from panelist can answer. Okay. Next question is from Sherry Omo. Is Power Center and Data Engineering domain supported for Azure installation? Azure. Azure Linux has been our Amazon Linux. One second, let me check one second. We will get back to you on that one. Okay. Uh, next question from Aditya Chilukuri. For EDC, when will be talent? Oh, it's answered. That question is, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, next question from William Flood. Uh, when is the next dot release coming out? So the uh, next one, uh, very specifically for uh, data catalog, 
is going to be 10401 expected to be this month or next and uh, we have our hot fix which will be 1041 expected to be end of q2 beginning q3 okay um, and next question from aditya chiluguri is edc on uh, grid supported with the 10.4 Answer, I Lux, think. Yes. You, could you answer that question? or? It's already answered, I think. Yeah, uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay, next question from Benjamin. Uh, a follow-up on PWH on Postgres. So still I require a Oracle license to install a DEI. Is that correct? Yes. If you have Oracle sources where you, you want to connect and fetch the profile warehouse or anything, you would need the Oracle license. Okay. Uh, next question from Deepak. Uh, when will TDM and DIH be on uh, version 10.4? We will get back to you on that one, Deepak. So uh, we will reach out to the TDM and DIH team and get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, next question from Shanmugam. Uh, is there a separate Informatica data quality available or is it only data integration quality? In one of the slides, I saw Informatica data quality mentioned rather data integration quality. Mm. I, I think you, you got confused with the big data. And so it's going to be power center and data quality. That's all you are going to get, which is part of the platform. Okay. I think uh, we have answered most of the questions. Uh, we still have half an hour, so we'll be waiting. You can uh, post your questions and yeah, we got one, one more question uh, okay. from Benjamin. Is there any capability update on data services on DEI? Is there any REST API creation capability built in DEI? Uh, that one has to be answered by the DE panelist. Okay. Uh, Aditya panelist has our which, the... which version and by when? I, I don't know what it means is it a follow up question or uh, looks like no, i don't know okay. maybe he will clarify later okay. Okay? or our panelists will get back to yeah. them okay uh, we have one more question from narayana mm -hmm. does pc provide a, a utility uh, for migration code to IICS or even to developer from 10.4? Um, not that I am aware of, but uh, I, I think uh, we have to reach out to the field if they have something on those lines. Okay. Uh, next question is from Leon. Uh, I think he is coming with a, a clarification for a previous question he has asked. Uh, Leon, could you please uh, post your question once more so that we'll get a clarity of what uh, you are asking about. Uh, next question is from William. Are the client tools going to be backwards compatible for dot releases? Um, that stays uh, true for uh, power center, but uh, for the data quality or data engineering, still you need to match the version and the client till service pack or hot fix. Okay. Uh, and next question from Aditya. Uh, talent, which version and by when it will be available for EDC? Uh, We'll get back to you that on that, Aditya. I don't have information. Our panelist will be able to answer that question for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question from Sumit. Is 10.4 IDQ compatible with MDM MDE 10.2? When is MDM MDE 10.4 coming out? 
um uh, sumit unfortunately we don't have any mdm expert in this call so i would request you to open a technical ticket for that one okay uh, leon has come up with a question edc mm -hmm. is running on three linux uh, nodes uh, which will we need to install uh, no it's that question is you know, th those uh, nodes were infrastructure server metadata processing server and hadoop cluster servers i guess the question is answered lux so okay. we we'll move on to the next question uh, uh, next question from william since oracle has started charging more for the use of java has informatica change how is it using java for running its platform yes william right so uh, starting 10 to h of 2 we bundle a new uh, java or a jdk it's called azure jdk which we bundle for free of cost uh, you can still go ahead if you are in older version these are all for the new java versions where you will have issues but azure jdk is available for you from informatica okay next question from benjamin uh, will 10.4 be a in place upgrade or should we go with a fresh installation or upgrade upgrade a route uh, benjamin it will depend on what your uh, business requirement is if it, you don't have anything you can go for a fresh installation but if it's going to be uh, upgrade from older version and everything in place will be better because you can borrow your uh, permissions and services directly again it will depend upon the company resource whether you have new servers or you don't have new servers okay thank you lux uh, we have some more time uh, let's okay. wait uh, if anyone is having any queries on the topic lux has covered sure. please come up with the questions he is there to answer okay Yeah, we have one more question from Sherry. Which data engineering components have to be installed separately? Uh, so uh, based on this one, I, I see only integration and quality streaming is there. I think uh, you need to install the, if I am right, the four. Uh, it's going to be the masking part. Okay. Okay. Uh, any more questions? I am not seeing any question here. Uh, for uh, any feedback or suggestions, please uh, uh, see the chat section where you'll be able to see the link for uh, posting your feedbacks. Please um, suggest and put on your feedbacks because that will help us improve uh, our webinar topics and bring about new topics that is more relevant uh, for your use cases. Next question, uh, Lux, uh, goes like this. Can you share lists of any known issues we need to be aware when migrating to 10.4? Um, as of now, we have not seen any issues, Narayana. So I'm uh, very specifically talking from power center because I handle only power center. So I don't know about uh, data engineering or data catalog area. So if you are asking very specific for power center, we have not hit any issues as of today. Okay. Uh, and another question from Arjun, is data integration hub 10.2.4 compatible with 10.4? Uh, Arjun, again, uh, we will get back to you on this one. Uh, data integration and TDM are two questions. Uh, we will try to get the answer and post it. Okay. 
uh, Shari's question, as to Shari's question, I will answer that. Uh, Shari, uh, the recording will be available in YouTube and in the success portal. Uh, I'll shortly post the success portal link to you where you'll find the recording. And uh, post this webinar, we'll be sharing the deck and the recording as well. And uh, Lux, another question from Benjamin. Is there an inbuilt versioning capability available in DEI? Did DEI come uh, up with shared folders capability? So if you are, uh, Benjamin, if you are really specifically asking for the model repository, there was shared folder, but I don't know uh, for DEI, uh, how do I interpret this one? And we do have a lot of third party tool which we integrated for versioning rather than doing an inbuilt MRS versioning. So someone in the panel will be able to answer your folder question if it is very specific to DA use case. Okay. Uh, next question from Sunil. Uh, we have seen you will stop spotting uh, Solaris platforms from 10.4. How do we proceed with the existing servers if we have any? Uh, Sunil, uh, that's why I specifically said, uh, please open a technical case and we will work with you, specifically figuring out what to be done. Unfortunately, uh, the whole uh, support, if you look at Solaris, there has not been any development starting 2012 for the Solaris platform itself. And we can share an article wherein the Oracle uh, closed or dropped all the whole division was for the OS development was closed. So we encourage customers to move out to a Linux platform rather than staying in the Solaris. Okay, Lex. We have another question from Narayana. Uh, does 10.4 PC support MongoDB? If so, up to which version? Yeah, Narayana, yes, we do support MongoDB. Versioning, I don't know. If you are asking very specifically source and target, yes, we do support. It has been in support for a long time. But uh, version, as I said, we need to check the PAM. So. Okay. Uh, there is another question from Ingrid. Uh, will there be a more detailed information about DB2 uh, is it OS uh, version 12 uh, function level support together with 10.4 of power exchange we use now function function level 506 in, in case it's a good question but I have no answer for you <laughs> I, I, I think you have to open a power exchange ticket sorry about it right? yeah. so please open a power exchange ticket they will be able to answer your question okay so we still have time. Please post your questions. Uh, let me see if I am able to pull out the PAM changes. So. <laughs> We'll be able to take a look at certain versions of MangoDB. Yes, Lex, we have one more question okay. uh, from William. Uh, are data services going to be supported for the foreseeable future? I, like uh, William, we do have flavors of data services, but uh, for your specific, I am not able to understand. Uh, please open a ticket. We'll uh, discuss further. Mm. Thank you. We have uh, 10 more minutes uh, to end this webinar. Please post uh -huh. your questions. Lex is here to answer. <laughs> so let's look at uh, someone asked about MangoDB. Yeah, yeah. 
so let me let's mango db uh, so you see it's mango db 10 2.4 2.63 and 4 uh, the, those are the supports we have on source and target for mango db okay uh another question from kalyan uh, lux very general question it is do you see kafka taking over etl and other old technologies um no, uh, we do have uh, traction kalyan but if you look kafka is messaging so it is relevant to the industry where they have a lot of messages right it's not very uh, transactional where you do batch kafka is real time so wherever you have real time kafka will be helpful okay um, next question is from honor what is a recommended setting for minimum and maximum pool size setting for jboss to resolve contention issue hey honor uh, this is like off the hand we don't recommend because uh, we need to take a look at your environment uh, and i request you to open a technical case and tell what exactly it is then we will be able to recommend Honestly. based on the subject matter expert thank you okay. another question from william lux okay. uh, does the informatica cloud platform get new core releases more often than on on premise uh, premise installs of informatica yes william right so if you look at as a industry a uh, lot of things happen on cloud so cloud itself will have a short uh, release cycle within 3 months 4 months but it will be incremental as against where it is on prem and these are big center of excellence are very hard to make changes in your production right completely integrated so on prem releases tends to be slower than cloud okay hope it answered your question okay. william ha huh. another question from honor again uh, uh, no well it's answered by our panelists i think okay Next, we'll wait for eight more minutes sure. for. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more question, Lux. Uh, are you uh, from Leon? Are mm -hmm. you planning to support Redshift, so Snowflake, uh, Power Exchange for AIX? Uh, so, Leon, this. drivers are third party right we depend on amazon to deliver these on our snowflex to deliver on a certain uh, platform if it is available we will surely support if it is not there then we are not going to support as a matter of fact if you look at the data engineering or the hadoop cluster it's available only on linux it's not available on any pl any platform so uh, as and when the new platforms are supported by the vendors then we would be able to add this support in the next uh, release cycle or a hot fix or a service pack cycles another question uh, from benjamin uh, please share the pam link for 10.4 along with recording and handouts yes uh, it's part of the first slide itself i have put the uh, url on that one you should be able to take a look at it yeah. 
we have some more time Yeah, we have one more question, Lux, from William. Uh, can you give more detail of what the operational insights in is and why we would want to use it? Uh, so, uh, William, operation insight is a new tool or product which we are. So, this is independent of your domain. So, you can have this one and monitor the domain across your global infrastructure particularly for informatica it will give you a very good insight on how many servers are there whether it's up or down and what are the jobs how much load including the size meaning how many gbs or terabytes of data you are operating and everything so it gives a very good uh, statistical analytical information for you uh, thank you, Lux. Another question from Shanmugam. Operational Insights has replaced proactive monitoring. Yes. We are replacing the proactive monitoring with Operation Insight. Okay. We have four more minutes. Yeah. Another question from Shanmugam. Uh, is this free along with basic license or advanced? Uh, so if you look at it on the slide itself, it was uh, free on the uh, basic license, but you have a limitation, right? So when you are going to go for free, it only retains for last 30 days. If you are going to go for uh, more advanced license, then you have uh, additional advantages. Okay, one more question from Shanmugam. I believe this was already there in 10.2, if I am not wrong. Possibly Shanmugam, right? So I, I, I think uh, this was basically new uh, enhancement they have put in place. So that's the only thing which is coming, right? So pricing model, again, uh, this has been shared by our product management team. Just open a ticket or they, we will be able to route it to the right person. Thank you for joining Shunmugam. Uh, another question from Sherry. Uh, I need to be able to query Informatica repository to create audit reports of when objects changed and who changed them. Is there any features in this version that will help me do this? Uh, no, Sherry, we don't have anything on those lines, uh, but you are welcome to open a ticket, then we will be able to see if we can give you a customized query on those lines. But as of now, uh, we don't have a tracking on object changes, particularly from Power Center, okay? I don't know about data quality or engineering where it uses model repository but particularly uh, power center repository we don't have ways to track unless you you are using a version repository We have some more time.
Okay, Lux, I guess okay. we have answered most of the questions here. Um, thank you everyone for joining for this fabulous session by Lux. Uh, thank you, Lux, for uh, spending some time um, for this Tech Tuesday webinar uh, for the success portal. And I guess we'll end the session. Hey, thank you, everyone. And thank you, uh, Vrinda, for facilitating uh, the sure, session. Yes. And thanks for the, all the panelists. Thank you. Have a nice day.